Whether you pronounce it decals or decals, water slide transfers can really make your models pop. And here's a great way to get a consistent look, coming up on JC's Rip Track. My name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If you're looking for tips and advice on how to transform your plastic models into something that you would see on the rails today, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. So what is your experience with decals? What has really worked well for you? Have you had any disasters? Let me know in the comments section down below. So let's get this out of the way. You've probably noticed that I pronounce D-E-C-A-L differently than most of you do. For most English-speaking Canadians, particularly those of us who were raised in Western Canada, it rhymes with freckle. Now hopefully you don't find this irritating throughout this whole video because I really do have a good method in applying them. You see, decals can be difficult to apply, but with a few tricks they can look great. Now, I've had a lot of experience in applying decals. In particular, I really cut my teeth on this 1 350th scale model of the USS Enterprise from Star Trek, the motion picture. Now, this model is enormous. It was three feet long, and it was literally wrapped with these monstrous decals in order to simulate the aztec panels on it. And these had to be applied even before the markings did. On the other end of the spectrum, you may have seen a little bit of my work in the second locomotive weathering video where I apply tiny new road numbers to an N-scale locomotive. Large or small, the process of applying them is basically the same. This time, the challenge is applying a lot of decals into a very, very small space. These Husky Wellstack cars are just 6 inches long by 1 inch deep, and on each side there are 25 decals. And these are a great demonstration piece as these are in end scale and to apply so many decals into such a small place has challenges all its own. Not only that, because the road numbers are white applied over black, you actually have to layer decals on top of each other. And that in and itself can be a challenge. So let's get started. So here's an essential list of things that you will need in order to apply decals. First, you're gonna need a cutting mat or a glass surface in order to cut the decals on. You're going to need a small container filled with warmish water. Now obviously if you were working with much larger decals then a larger container is going to be necessary but in this particular case I just used a small plastic one. Number three, you're going to need at least one clean paintbrush. Another essential, sharp nose tweezers. And the most essential tool is a hobby knife with a number 11 blade. Brand new is preferable. Also have on hand a piece of paper towel and you're also going to need both setting solution and a decal solvent. In my case, I use microscales, microset, and microsol. And lastly, but this is also very important, you will need some brush on gloss varnish. In my case, I happen to use Games Workshop's hard coat. The main goal when applying decals is to avoid the so-called silvering effect, is where you can actually see the film of the decal around the actual marking itself. And this process starts even before we break out the decal sheet. If you remember nothing else from this process, remember the decals should be applied over a smooth gloss coat. The smoother your surface, the better looking your decals are going to end up looking. It's also important to make sure that the surface is clean. You can apply decals over weathered surfaces, but make sure that they are well sealed with gloss varnish. You don't want to be applying decals directly over weathering powders, for example. Guaranteed, you're going to get silvering with that. Now the smooth coat can be done a number of different ways. You can use spray-on varnish just simply from a rattle can, you can use an airbrush, or you can apply it just simply with a brush. It just needs to be smooth and it needs to be glossy. Once this is dried, then you can move on to the process of applying the decals. So with these well stack cars, the last layer of paint was a clear gloss yellow, so I was all ready to go. However, I will be using the brush on gloss varnish a little later in the process, but there's others that you can use as well, as long as, again, I'm going to hammer this, a smooth gloss surface. Now since there are so many decals to keep track of, I worked on each car separately, but doing all of the same side of each car before eventually turning them all over and doing the other side. This helps preserve and protect the work that you're doing, because you don't want to accidentally rub off a decal that you've already applied. Since there are so many decals on each of these models, I kept the reference sheet nearby, and then I cut out the decals that I needed using that brand new number 11 blade, but only five at a time, and I kept them on the cutting mat. Using a paintbrush, I dabbed clean water on them and let them soak. I find this a better way to soak smaller decals rather than immersing them in water. 
With larger decals, soaking them directly in the water does work a bit better, but it's also a good idea to put a tiny amount of dish soap into the water in order to get the decals to move smoothly. Now keeping the decals on the mat works very well as you're less likely to lose small decals in the water, especially if it separates from the backing paper. And secondly, you know exactly where each decal is. And while they were soaking, I brushed on a bit of microset onto the sides of the well stack cars. Once the decals had time to soak, they were now sliding off the decal paper. It was time to apply them. Using either tweezers or spearing the side of them with the number 11 blade, I moved them into position, pulling them off of the decal paper and onto the model with either the blade or a small paintbrush. I then used the corner of the paper towel to wick up some of the water in the setting solution and I used the number 11 blade to position the decals. Once they were in the right position, I carefully used the edge of the paper towel again to pull out any extra water and then double check their positions. I would then move on to the next set of decals, checking the reference guide, cutting out what I needed and then applying them and wicking away any extra water. One tip in applying so many decals in a small space is to not position them beside each other. In other words, work on one side of the model and then the other side, and then just keep working back and forth and just letting them a chance to dry a little bit. The one exception here is that there were a couple of decals that were either just too close together or that had to be layered on top of each other. In that case, I left them off in the first round and would seal the first set in and then would come back and apply these new decals in the second round. Once I finished the first round, I moved on to the next car. This allows the decals to dry before applying the microsol or any kind of decal solvent. I wanted to make sure that the decals wouldn't float out of position while soaking the stuff that softens and dissolves the decal film. You see, decal solvent softens and even dissolves the film outright that carries the ink of the decal. By using this, the decals become further integrated into the surface of the model. After applying the microsol, I then let it dry again before brushing over the decals with some thin down acrylic gloss varnish. In this case, as I mentioned before, Games Workshop's Art Coat. This helps seal it all in and also helps to hide the decal film. I would then let this all dry before coming back again and applying the road numbers and the additional decals. This second process works the same as the first, and since the previous decals have already been sealed in with a gloss coat, you're good to go. Applying decals over decals, as long as the first layer has been sealed, works exactly the same way as applying them normally. Let the decals dry a bit, apply the Microsol again, let them dry thoroughly and then brush on the gloss varnish to seal them in. Now here's a bonus tip. While I didn't have to do this time around, applying decals to an uneven surface brings its own set of challenges. If the decals don't lie flat or haven't conformed to the surface of the model well, you're going to have to come back and do a second round of the decal solvent. In my case, Microsol. And also, it may be helpful in the stages to poke some tiny holes in the decals just before you apply the microsol again in order to get the microsol in and underneath the decal as well. And that'll help it stick and suck it down to the level of the model. Now, you might have to do this a couple of times if it's a really uneven surface, especially ribs on boxcars. Either way, you just keep at it, and at the point at which that they lie flat, that's when you can apply the gloss varnish. Now these Husky Wellstack cars were a real exercise in applying decals all over them. There were just so many in such a small space that it had real challenges. Chances are you won't need to apply as many in such a small space. Still, the process is largely the same. I'll be revisiting this topic again, especially when it comes to the aspect of weathering decals further once you've applied them. In a future video, I will also be offering some insight on how to actually make your own decals. Now for these Husky Wellstack cars, they are ready for weathering, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break with them as I have a number of other projects that I would like to share with you first. So I hope you found this helpful. If you're looking for more tips on how to make the most out of your painting and weathering projects, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon and you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. 
Also, if you haven't already, please check out the other videos in this channel, especially the Weathering Basics playlist. You can also check out the links down below for some links of the products that you've seen in this video. Also, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter for daily weathering tips, and also my new Instagram account where I post a couple of teaser pictures of upcoming projects. So thanks for watching, good luck, and may you keep on track. Mm -hmm.